Hello, SUV with Larry Member, the last summer football transfer campaign was arguably the largest ever if we talk about the quality and quantity of starting agents, real and potential. This summer is only starting, but it already surpassed the previous one in this regard. Moreover, there are a lot of reasons to believe that in 2021 we will see something extraordinary in this sense. As of today, all the Ballon d'Or winners from 2008 onwards, plus Robert Lewandowski, who was supposed to get this prize at least once, and Karim Benzema, who is hot and undeniable in Everest to receive this accolade in 2022, will enter the next year with three decided units of his tiny club. They will find the correct. Indeed. Partly this stunning fact is attributed to the venerable age of Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and company. They all are well in the thirties, and being near to the end of career, even the footballers of this stature used to sign only short-term deals. But the other and even more important part of the equation is related to a new financial era in football, which has begun after the coronavirus outbreak. This upheaval left even a lot of big clubs almost unguarded and immediately forced them to cut expenditures, left without huge money from sales of tickets in all of their forms for more than a year. The grandes had to survive and try to avoid long-term financial commitments. As is usually the case, Florentino Perez did his job much better than the others. Despite the additional burden in the form of reconstruction of the Santiago Bernabeu, which was an extremely expensive project, the president of Real Madrid masterfully found a solution to the awfully complicated situation. Two frugal transfer campaigns during this period of time Real have bought only Eduardo Camavinga and brought in David Alaba as a free agent, although his sign-in bonus and lucrative contract took a lot of investments, and therefore saved a ton of money. Along the way, Perez, who has a wise head, so characteristic for his age, on the implausibly young, energetic shoulders, significantly reduced spending on footballers' contracts, releasing Sergio Ramos and cutting Luka Modric's salary with his consent. This, along with a couple profitable sales of players, put the club in a much more secure position, and now, after another triumph in the Champions League and a record-breaking sum of prize money, around 135 million euros, and the long-awaited exits of Marcelo, Gareth Bale and Disco, who were among the team top earners amid the visible lack of productivity, Madrid are even in a better financial form than in 2019, right before the pandemic. But obviously, not all big clubs have such a go-getting and smart boss, and the number of those who significantly suffered under the circumstances is much bigger. Barcelona's financial woes are well documented. As for Juventus and Inter, they are only in a slightly better shape. Even Bayern, despite their sporting success, renowned expertise and trademark solidity, found themselves in a time of trouble and uncertainty. Paradoxically enough, exactly this success in a way did hurt the German giants. Winning the Champions League in 2020, many Bayern players started to rate themselves much higher than before, first of all in financial terms. For the very same reason, the perennial Bundesliga champions couldn't meet the demands of Alaba and Niklas Zuli. Losing both of them without any compensation, Bayern now are once again facing this problem with regard to Lewandowski and Serge Gnabry. 
The contracts of both of them are valid only for a year and the German giants are currently basically locked in a non-winning situation. Should they decide to satisfy the financial appetites of players, the Bayern bosses will lose not only money, they will lose face as well. And this is even more damaging prospect, given that it will prompt other footballers to haggle more vigorously in the future. At the same time, the idea of holding both the Pole and the German for another campaign against their will is hardly any better, for obvious reasons. The third way, find a proper replacement at first and then sell both or at least one of them this summer, is more positive and it seems that the Bundesliga giants opted for this approach. But the process will be surely difficult and long, and there is little doubt that Bayern will act carefully and cautiously, trying to avoid overpayment and reckless transfers. In fact, it's a general trend, as you may see amid the large amount of gossip and hotly anticipated moves, very little real action is happening so far and it could be explained only by necessity to finish the outgoing financial season with as good balance as possible. As a result, the vast majority of clubs, including the elite, strive to register all the transfers and even sign free agents after the first day of July in order to balance the books and comply with the regulations of UEFA, so-called fair play. Facing this new reality, players are adapting as well, and for many of them, especially for a marking name ones who have a lot of publicity and financial security, the status of free agent became the best and winning solution, a kind of bailout. Kylian Mbappé recently brilliantly used it to his advantage. The closer he has been to the last day of his previous contract with PSG, the more expensive his services were getting. Eventually, it gave him a decisive edge in simultaneous negotiations with both his current club and Real Madrid, and as a net result, perhaps the most luxurious contract in the history of the game. Staying in Paris, Mbappé not only will earn the astronomical sum of money for signing bonus and salary, but will also substantially increase his political weight within the club. Being near the end of contract is a double-edged sword though, and the examples of Paul Pogba, Paolo Dybala and Usman Dembele clearly demonstrate it. The Manchester United midfielder spent another trophyless fifth on the trout campaign at Old Trafford, marked by a string of injuries and mainly disappointing personal performances. Hence Pogba's value even diminished, and now he is facing a harsh prospect of signing contract with the stingy Juventus, which means a much lower salary that he enjoyed in the last six years. The same goes for the Argentine, who only one year ago angrily refused to extend contract with Juventus, deeming that 10 million euros per season are not good enough for him. But in 2022, Dybala's stocks took a dip to such extent that the Turin-based club opted to withdraw even the less generous offer. And now Paola, who is close to move to Inter, has to settle for much more modest conditions. As for Dembele, he also visibly lost prestige and appeal in a desperate attempt to increase his next salary, and now would be glad to sign any reasonable deal with any big club, whether it would be Barcelona, Chelsea or PSG. It shows how risky this tactic could be if it's not backed by appropriate level of play and achievements. At the same time, it's evident that big-name footballers will continue to gamble in this regard in the near future, striving for better contracts. Mohamed Salah is a prime example of it. On the contrary to his teammate Sadio Mane, who wants to change environment immediately and is poised to move to Bayern in the upcoming weeks, if not days, 
the Egyptian is patiently waiting on the wings. Salah, who very much like Lewandowski, feels himself undervalued by his current club and is heavily annoyed with lack of support from Liverpool in his Ballon d'Or quest. As is the poll, Mo is eager to sign a long-term beneficial deal, but didn't find an agreement with Liverpool's board. While Bayern bosses are skeptical about Robert's ability to retain his current form in a year time, there are reasons to believe at Enfield that it would be hard for Salah to play in Jurgen Klopp's extremely energy-consuming football after the Red Star will be in his early 30s. As a result, the Egyptian is planning to see out his contract with the acquiescence of his club in order to join the big group of Asian superstars in search of brighter future in 2023.